Hi friends! Welcome to Wisbusters. I'm Emma and today I'm going to show you how to show trends as a bar chart in a single cell using the sparkline function in Google Sheets. If this is the first time you're learning about the sparkline function, I'll give you a review of the purpose and syntax of the function. Then I'll use examples to show you all the attributes and ways you can customize your bar chart. The purpose of the sparkline function is to create a small chart within a single cell. It can create line charts, bar charts, column charts, and win-loss charts within a single cell. To use the sparkline function, we need to tell Google Sheets two things. One, where do we want to retrieve our data to trend? That is, the range of cells or array which contains the data we want to plot. Two, what type of chart we want to create and the associated attributes. These are the two parameters. In Google Sheets, you will see equal sparkline data options. Now that you know the syntax, let's dive in to understand each of these with examples. Before we begin to stay updated with new videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified of the latest videos out. Let's look at creating a bar chart with the sparkline function. In our table, we see five months of data from January to May for Cupcakes Factory. To create a bar chart, we type equal sparkline, open parenthesis. Our first parameter is the range of cells or array which contains the data we want to plot. So we choose range B3 to F3, comma. Our second parameter is the attribute of the graph. Since we want a bar chart, we can tell this to Google Sheets in this parameter, like this. Open curly brackets and the attribute name is chart type, which we put in quotation marks. To define the chart type, we put a comma and the second part of defining your attribute is bar, which is the type of chart. Then close the curly brackets, closed parenthesis, press enter. Notice a stacked bar chart appears in the cell. Before we dive into understanding the stacked bar chart, let's look at the syntax. The syntax when using the second parameter is, when defining the attribute, we need to have the attribute name and the value for the attribute in a pair separated by a comma. Multiple attributes are separated by semicolons. In this case, our attribute name was chart type and the value of the attribute is bar to create a bar chart. Now analyzing the bar chart presented in the single cell, let's create a stacked bar chart in Google Sheets for the same range of values and compare them to show you what it means. So let's select the range B3 to F3, click insert, chart. A column chart appears by default and the chart editor appears on the right. Let's click the drop down menu under chart type and click 100% stacked bar chart. This is like a zoomed in version of the bar chart in the cell. Notice there are five different bars and the horizontal axis is 100%. If we right click the chart and click series, apply to all series, then click data label in the chart editor, the labels appear. Notice that each bar is the value. Let's make this a bit smaller. So if we compare each of the colors and the width of the bars, so this one, this one's smaller, and so on. This represents 1,000, then 500, then 2,500, and then the last is 3,000, and so on. So we saw an example of one attribute in the second parameter, which is a chart type with a value of bar to create a bar chart. Let's delete this. The following are a list of attributes we can use for bar charts. Let's go into each of these. Max allows us to set the max value along the horizontal axis. So in row three, we know that the sum of the range is B3 to F3. So the sum, if we sum this, it's equal to 9,800, which we can see at the bottom right corner. But suppose if we want a max value of 1,500, to do that, we need to type a second attribute and that will be separated by a semicolon. And the attribute name is max. So we put that into quotation marks and the value of max is going to be 15,000. We press enter. 
notice that there is a white area between the orange bar and the end of the cell. That's the difference between 15,000 and 9,800. Let's look at another example in using the attribute max. In this table, we have the number of tickets sold for five individuals and the week's progress in another column. Suppose the daily quota of tickets sold is 100. We can use the bar chart to include a trend with the max attribute. So in cell two, we can type equal sparkline. Recall the first parameter is the range we retrieve our data or trend, and that is cell B2. So we reference cell B2, comma. The second parameter is to identify the chart type, and we want to add a max value of 100. So we will type open curly brackets and chart type, which is a bar, and we separate our attributes with a semicolon and the second attribute is max. So we type max in quotation marks and the value of that is going to be 100. We close the curly brackets and close the parentheses. Notice that the value for the max attribute is a number. So we entered a number of 100, not a text in quotations. Also notice that the cell is colored orange in half of the cell and the right half is white. So this means that the full cell has a max value of 100. And if the number is less than 100, that much will be colored while the remaining will be white by default. Let's drag this formula down to the rest of the cells and see what we get. The bars have different lengths depending on the values in the cell. If we want to create the same effect for a progress bar, we can do the same in column E. Let's try it. Equal sparkline open parenthesis, and we will use D3 to reference that value. The chart type is bar, so we type the attribute name chart type within quotation marks, and the value for chart type is bar. Because we want to do the max, we add another attribute, which is max, and the value for that is going to be 100%. Closed curly brackets, closed parenthesis. Note that we did include the percentage sign here to make sure we are comparing the progress percentage to 100%. Let's drag this down and we get varying lengths. Let's look at an example for Cupcakes Factory. Another attribute we can use is to set the colors of the bar. As you noticed in this example, there are two colors, orange and blue. We can change the color by using the attributes color one and color two. Color one is to set the first color in the stack bar, like the orange here. And color two is to set the second color used, like the blue color here. So let's add another attribute, color one. And the value of that is going to be red. So we type in red. And the next attribute is color two. And the value of that is going to be green. Notice the colors changed. If we wanted only the second color to change, we can omit color one. So let's delete color one. And notice that the first color, which is color one, is orange, and the second is green. Note though that in our example with the tickets sold in the bar two table, we can customize only the first color, color one. There is no color two to change in this situation. For example, if we type in cell E2 here, we add another attribute, which is color one, and we type it as blue for the value and drag this down, it's all blue. Please note, you can also use hex code as the values for your color. For column C, let's try changing the color with a hex code for amber. So let's add another attribute, color one, and let's type the hex code for amber, which is hashtag FF B F zero zero in quotations and press enter. Notice that the color changed. We can drag this down. So also notice that the hex code includes the hashtag before the code, all included in the quotation marks. Another attribute is empty, which gives us some control of what we want to do with empty cells. The values we can use can be zero or ignore. In our example for tickets sold, let's remove the value in B4 and see what happens. B4 is now empty. Notice we get an error, hashtag NA, with a comment. 
which says that Sparkline requires more data points, expected one, found zero. Let's change the formula where an empty cell has a value of zero. So let's add an attribute here where we add the attribute name empty and the value for that is going to be zero. And let's drag this down. Notice it's blank, it's a white cell. So let's try using the value ignore. So if we type in ignore and we drag this down, we get an error, hashtag NA with the error message. You can choose whichever inbuilt value in this function to deal with empty cells. You can also use the F error function to manage errors. See the link below in the description for a video dedicated to the if error function, including examples and important tips about the function. Another attribute is NAN, which allows you to customize how you treat cells with non-numeric data. You can either convert them or ignore them. In this table in column D, let's put the word absent in cell E4. Observe that we get an error, hashtag NA with a comment, Sparkline requires more data points, expected one, found zero. So let's try using the value convert in our Sparkline function. So in this case, the, the attribute name is NAN and the value for our attribute is going to be convert. And we drag this down and observe that cell E4 is a blank white cell. But what about if we use ignore as a value? So we change convert into ignore and we drag it down. Observe, we get an error hashtag NA with a comment. Sparkline requires more data points, expected one found zero. You can choose whichever inbuilt value in this function to deal with non-numeric data. You can also use the if error function to manage errors. And of course, see the link in the description for the video dedicated to if error function, including examples and important tips about the function. Another attribute in the Sparkline function is RTL. RTL determines whether the chart is rendered right to left or left to right. Options are true or false, where true means that it is rendered right to left and false means otherwise. Let's take a look at our data in the Cupcakes factory. In cell G3, let's continue to have this and let's add a parameter RTL. So let's type RTL and the value of this is going to be true. And this is Boolean true. We do not put this in quotation marks. Press enter. The bar chart is now flipped because it is reading it from right to left. If we type in false instead, notice we get a bar chart the way we want it, reading it from left to right, which is the default option. Therefore, by default, the bar chart reads from left to right, or the default value for RTL is false. So those are the options for the attributes that we can see for the bar graph in Google Sheets Sparkline function. And that is it for today, my friends. Check out my other videos on the other types of charts you can create with the Sparkline function. Thank you for watching this video and hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this and hit the bell to get notifications of the latest videos out. See you in the next video.